Chapter 13, Section 4 is entitled Multiplying Binomials. Now remember, a binomial has two parts separated by one operand, either addition or subtraction. Multiplying binomials is done through a process that's commonly called FOIL. And this is not something I made up. This is the way they teach it in pretty much all math classes. FOIL stands for first, outers, inners, last. FOIL stands for first, outers, inners, last. First, outers, inners, last describes the order in which the binomials are put together. You multiply the first terms together, the outside terms together, the inside terms together, and the last terms together. Now, binomials here. As you can see here, I gave you a set of generic binomials, a plus b and x plus y, just to go through and talk about the different parts here. The first, the first would be a and x, the first term each binomial is A and X. The outside terms, the outside terms here are A and Y. That's for this to the outside. The I part, the inners, the inside terms here are B and X. And L stands for last, that's the last term in each binomial, B and Y. That's what you multiply together here. Once you multiply the things together, then you just go through and put the components together using addition. All right, so the first thing I want to do before we actually really work on the real thing here is I just want to work on identifying the parts with you because if you can't identify what the first, the outers, the inners, and the last are, the rest isn't going to do anything. So, as you can see in examples one and two that I've got set up, you're just supposed to identify things. The first, the outers, the inners, and the last. Now, this is, once again, a section in chapter 13 where you do want to first change subtraction into adding the opposite. So that's where we're going to start. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2x plus negative 5 times 3x plus 4. Not a big deal. All right. Now, F stands for first. So the first term in each binomial. So that's going to be 2x and 3x. O. O stands for the outers or the outside terms. The terms that are furthest to the outside are 2x and 4. I. I stands for inners, or in other words, the inside terms. So the terms that would be inside, or in other words, in the middle, that's going to be negative 5 and 3x. L. L stands for last, the last term in each binomial. That's negative 5 and 4. And again, this is not what you're doing in the homework set. This is that preliminary step, making sure you have this down. All right, so let's look at the other set of binomials there in example 2. Negative 3x plus 2 times 8x plus 7. Negative 3x plus 2 times 8x plus 7. All right, start with the first. What are the first terms in each binomial? That's the first term in each binomial. Kaylee. 3 or negative 3x and 8x Negative 3x and 8x, good. Oh, what are the outside terms in the set of binomials, the terms furthest to the outside of Esther? Negative 3 and 7. Negative 3x and 7. Okay. 
I. I stands for the inside term, so the terms closest to the middle. What are the inside terms here, Sabrina? Uh, 2 and 8x. 2 and 8x. L. L stands for last. What is the last term in each binomial? Jackson. 2 and 7. 2 and 7. All right, so that's the preliminary step. That's where we're going to start in all the rest of the problems. Now, yeah, there's more to it, but the rest of it, you've really done the rest of it. So once you get past this, the rest of it should be pretty easy for you. All right, so let's take a look there. I did a test problem for you to see exactly what you got to do here. The test problem is x minus 5 times x plus 4. x minus 5 times x plus 4. All right, now, first of all, we do have a subtraction sign here, right here. So that needs to get changed. I'm going to write that as x plus negative 5 times x plus 4. All right, so now I'm going to go through and do the same thing I just did. Identify the first, the outers, the inners, and the last. The difference is <coughs> I'm going to have to put a multiplication sign between everything this time. Right, multiplication sign. So the first terms here are x and x. So I write x times x. The outside terms here are the x and the 4. So I multiply together x and 4. Inside terms, question? No. Inside terms here are negative 5 and x. So I write negative 5 times x. The last terms here are negative 5 and 4. So I put time sign between those. Now, the next step, obviously, would be the actual process of multiplication here. All right, so for the first, I have x times x. Now, remember, that's like these both have a 1 as the exponent. And hopefully, you remember, we actually just add the exponents together. So x times x makes x to the second. Oh, we had 4 times x there. That's easy. We just jam those two together. 4x. Same thing's going to happen in i. Negative 5 times x. Just jam them together. Negative 5x. And then the last, negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. Now, the last thing you have to do then, you're just going to run all these things together with addition signs. Very little is actually going to get added because remember, the only way you can add something together is if they have like variables with like exponents. For instance, it's like x squared next to 7. You can't add those together. Now, in most of these problems, though, you will be able to put together the outside and the insides. I'm not saying that's forever true in perpetuity. It will not necessarily always be true. But the way these problems are written, it's generally going to work that way for you. So. I'm going to put together the 4 and the negative 5x. Again, I'm talking about adding here now. So that's negative 1x. And then I just run all the parts together. x squared plus negative 1x plus negative 20. Answer. OK. So let's practice that very thing here. That's where we need to go now. Let's take a look at example 3. x minus 12 times x minus 6. x minus 12 times x minus